Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my new subscribers. I am so grateful and thankful for you all. Today we're going to learn how to make the Tunisian half double crochet. I have my 7mm hook here and just some thick yarn that I want to use just so we can see our stitches a little better. If you do not know how to crochet, you can use, you can go to my beginners Tunisian crochet. Um, we'll show you how to make the very basic simple stitch for your Tunisian crochet. So we're going to start off with an even number of stitches. You can make either an even or an odd number. It does not matter. So I'm going to make 10 chains. I'm going to make my slip knot. And go ahead and insert my hook. Now, I am a beginner as well with this Tunisian crochet, so bear with me. Please be patient with me. So, I'm going to go ahead and make my 10 chains. Remember, you can make any number of chains that you want to. So, I'm going to make 10 chains. Go ahead and pause the video if you would like. You're just making 10 regular chains just like you would with your regular crochet hook. So, I'm going to make those 10 chains and I will be back. Remember, I'm just making an even number of chain, which is 10. You can make as many as you would like. And I'll be back when I have my 10 chains. Make sure that you are keeping your tension nice and loose. Make your uh, chains nice and loose, but not too loose or too tight. And I'll be back again. <laughs> Okay, so I have my 10 chains here. <clears throat> Excuse me. This loop on your hook counts as a chain. So you're going to skip that first chain and you're going to go into the back loops. Now, let me say you have to go into the back loops with your Tunisian crochet because you want that edge to look the same as it would when you finish off. So when you're making your half double crochet, go ahead and yarn over. And remember that loop on the hook counts. Skip that first loop, the first chain, and then go into the next loop with a uh, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now we're going to do that again. Yarn over and go into the loops of the back of your stitch here. And I'm having a bit of a, I'm having a struggle because I, I'm not used to this long hook, but practice makes progress. Now with these stitches, it's going to double up. So if you make 10 chains like I did, when you come to the end, you should have 19. And that is, you're going to double your stitches. So I made 10 chains. Double that is 20 minus 1 is 19. So when I come to the end of my row, I will have 19 loops on my hook. I'm sorry for being out of the camera again. I'm struggling with going into these back loops. I'm not used to such a long hook, so it's taking a bit of a struggle. But um, as I said, if you make 20 chains, you would double that. That would make it 40 minus 1. You should have 39 chains on your hook. Um, I have no idea what the reason that is. I think it's because it is a half double crochet and we're going to yarn over and pull through three loops. So you want to have the adequate amount. And when you're done, if you chained 10 like I did, you should have 19 loops on your hook when you're done. So I'm going to keep making my loops through here. Remember to yarn over before you go into that back stitch. And I will be back when I have 19 loops on my hook. Okay, so I have my 19 loops on my hook, and I did want to let you know if at any time you need to, if I'm going too fast, you can slow this down, or you can pause so you can make your chains, and then come back when you're done. So we're going to continue on with our work here, and make our second row. We're going to go ahead and make our return pass. So just like normal, you're going to yarn over and pull through only one loop. You're making your chain here. I realize that this is kind of like your chain one here. So go into the stitch again and yarn over. And now you're going to pull through three loops instead of only two like you would with your basic stitch. Pull through three and yarn over and just keep doing that. Yarn over and pull through your next three. One, 
I'm trying to go as low as possible. I'm trying to stay into the camera. This is so hard with this long hook. But yarn over and go into three of your loops and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through three and pull your loop up. Yarn over and pull through three loops and pull up your loop. Yarn over and pull through three and pull up your loop. We're getting closer to the end. Yarn over, pull through three, pull up your loop. Yarn over and pull through three. And that is your first set of stitches. Now, it may not look like it here, but you do have 19 chains here. You do have 19 stitches here. This is what the bottom portion looks like. That is why we do that chain in the back loop there. Because it gives it a nice edge instead of that chain that we would normally start off with when we are using our hook. So now we're going to move on to the next row. And when I come back, we will continue on and make our forward pass. Okay, so let's continue on here. Now we're going to continue and go back and make our forward pass. So as normal, that loop on your hook counts as a stitch. Now, these two loops right here in the front here, you're going to skip over. You're going to pass those loops there. Don't go into those loops. You're going to yarn over. And right next to that, in those two loops right here, right next to it, you're going to, that's where you're going to put your hook at in those two loops. And you're going to do that for every stitch all the way across. So, again, make sure that you yarn over in the beginning. And now remember, skip those first two and go into the next two, yarn over and pull up a loop. <coughs> Excuse me. Now do that one more time. Go ahead and yarn over. Go into the next two, yarn over and pull up your loop. Now I think somewhere in here I did make a mistake. I didn't pull up a loop. But make sure that you are yarning over. And then going into those next two bars there, yarn over and pull up your loop. If you're doing this correctly, you should have 19 loops on your hook again if you started off with 10. And just keep making your way around, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, go into the next two and pull up a loop. And continue doing that. Now you see I did not yarn over. So what's going to happen is when I get to the end of the row, I'm only going to have 18 chains here instead of 19. But I'm going to catch that and I will fix that. So make your last two right here. Remember to always yarn over. And just like we do normally when we on this side of those loops, go ahead and go into those two loops right on the side, that front one and that back one there to finish off. And that's just a part of that chain from the previous row. So go into both of those loops and yarn over and pull up a loop. So I only have 18 here, so I'm going to cut from here, and when I come back, I will have the correct number of stitches on here. I will be back. Okay, so now I have my 19 hooks on my um, loops on my hook here. Just like normal, we're going to go ahead and do our return pass. Go ahead and yarn over, and remember, you're only going to chain through one first. And then yarn over again and pull through three. And three. Yarn over again and pull through another three. And this is just your basic stitches for your half double crochet, your Tunisian half double crochet. Just make those chains all the way across. And remember, you should always have 19 loops on your hook. If you chain 10 like I did for my swatch, make sure that you have that double amount. So if you make 20, then you would have 40 minus 1, and you should have 39 loops on your hook. 
by the time you're finished. And it should stay that way from beginning to the end. So I have my last three here. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. And this is what she's looking like so far. I love like those vertical bars in the front. It's really cute. It's a very nice, easy stitch. So you just do the same thing you did before. Skip those first two. Yarn over. And go into those first two loops. Remember, you skip the first two in the beginning. And go ahead and slip stitch through those next two. And yarn over and pull up a loop. And it gives you a very nice V looking stitch here. So yarn over again, go into the next two, yarn over and pull up a loop. And you're just basically going into the next two from the previous row. Kind of like when you're doing a back post double crochet, sort of, kind of. Um, now we have all, we're still going. I have all the loops on my hook. And just keep making your way across. And then when you get to the end, remember, you're going to make those, make that last um, yarn over into that chain on the side. Remembering those hooks that show up on the side. And it gets a lot easier to see as you're making your way up um, on your swatch. As you're making your swatch bigger, those side loops for you to put your hook into will be a lot easier. Oops, I dropped my yarn here. Again, I'm just still trying to get used to this long, long hook, which I should be used to it because I know how to knit as well, but I haven't knitted in so long. So I'm getting closer to the end of the row, making sure I get all of my stitches. And now go into that last row. Remember, you're going into those last two stitches, that front and that back loop there. Trying not to split here. Right into those stitches. Remember, when you yarn over and then go right into those side stitches there with your hook. And yarn over and pull up a loop. So I'm going to keep making my way back and forth. I'm going to go ahead and do a return pass for a few more rows. And when I come back, I'm going to show you what that looks like when the swatch is much bigger. So you can really see that detail in the pattern. So I'll be back when I get that done. Okay, so now I have a few more rows of this beautiful half double crochet stitch. I love this. I'm falling in love with this Tunisian crochet. I love how the edges look and how those V stitches look. The half double crochet, well, Tunisian half double crochet, excuse me. And so now I'm going to show you how to go ahead and finish off. So don't yarn over. Go ahead and still skip that beginning stitch there. Go ahead and yarn over and make a slip stitch. If I can get it in. Don't go through three loops now. Make sure you're going through those two loops in the front. I just slip stitch off the camera. So I'll be back in camera. I promise, guys. It's just taking me some time to get used to this. Go ahead and pull through. And make your slip stitch. So to keep from torturing you, I am going to speed up a little bit. Um, like I said, go into those first two loops in the front and go ahead and make a slip stitch. And just keep repeating that. You're basically going into the same stitch, stitches the two loops that you did from the previous row. And just keep going all the way across. And when I come back, I'm going to show you that edge right there. I'm actually just going to speed up a little bit. Okay, so now we're getting to the end of the row, and I'm going to slip stitch. I don't know what I'm doing right here, but go into those last loops onto the side. As you can see, it gets a lot easier to see as you go up in your rows and slip stitch. And look at that. That is so pretty. That is so pretty. I like that stitch. I like that it's nice and, and it's not curling up. That curl up makes me crazy <laughs> so i like the fact that it's not curling up but as you can see that is why we put those we uh loop we, we crochet or make our stitches in the back loop and that's what that back look the back looks like the pearl stitch when you're knitting and this is your fun stitch all those pretty bees i i'm in love with this i am in love with me some Tunisian crochet so i want to 
Thank you for watching this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Cam Tai Hear Me Crochet. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed, blessed day. Bye-bye.